31 years of passion, 31 years of excellence. Welcome back. Well, the first experimental broadcast of the NAL International Channel was launched on the frequency of the information channel until its official broadcast began in October 1994. And since that time, actually, we can see everyone here is working very hard, exerting the utmost effort to bring you the best and to bring you all the latest and latest news and update you with the news minute by minute. Over the phone, uh, we have Dr. Vivian Moros, and uh, she's a political analyst. Hello. Hello, Nashua. Hello, nice Good to morning, you. doctor. Good so, morning. Happy anniversary. Thank you. So first of all, uh, to shed the light on uh, when you just talk about Egypt, soft power, I'm talking about NAL TV being really a soft power uh, to, of Egypt to reach to the whole world and to bring you all about Egypt and the Middle East uh, in general. Yes, of course. Uh, NAL TV has a very important role in uh, uh, shedding light and uh, emerging the real face of Egypt uh, uh, all over the world as an ambassador of broadcasting uh, all over the world. Because not only uh, Nile TV uh, is, is telling the real news what's happening, the authentic news that's happening in Egypt, but it's showing what, is Egypt, what does Egypt look like uh, through the channels, through the TV because some people think that Egypt is camels and only uh, Jilaba, so Nile TV is it's showing Egypt as it, at its best image. And of course, when you have uh, very elegant ladies and gentlemen uh, telling the news and anchors like you, it's just uh, emerging what is the standard of the Egyptian population and how the Egyptian woman is taking her place in being a good broadcaster and even a president of an important channel showing the world what is Egypt look like. So the, the role is, is beyond the nation as a soft power and uh, it plays a very important role as well uh, regarding the tourism and because it shows what Egypt looks like and uh, gives the desire for everyone to come and visit Egypt as well when they watch Nile TV all over the world because uh, uh, you come across people from non, not only Egyptians, everybody comes across it and watch it and gets very interested. So the, the, this soft power is, I mean, it's beyond imagination, beyond value and a, a lot of appreciation to what Night TV does, honestly, to Egypt is very important. Well, Doctor, uh, of course, you lived abroad for uh, some time, and um, you were following uh, at that time also NAL TV International. So could you tell us how was uh, the channel perceived by uh, partners at that time, and how uh, this channel was able to connect uh, Egyptians all around the world with their uh, homeland or motherland, Egypt? First of all, when uh, people discover uh, Nile TV and through me and, uh, and, and when they see you, they are surprised at how, how an Egyptian channel has a channel that speaks many languages with excellency. It's not just speaking a language. We, we see a lot of uh, channels that have uh, uh, foreign language speaking, but it's very funny, if I may say, but not, not Nile TV. The standard is very high and uh, very honorable. So. Just, just thinking that it, it, it honors me when, when I hear my friends or everybody else's uh, opinion of Nile TV. And it gives me more pride as well that I represent you sometimes when I'm abroad. So it's a great honor for me and for any Egyptian and for all Egypt to, to be part of Nile TV and to have Nile TV uh, on your screen. Sometimes in some countries it doesn't exist and you really feel very bad because it's very important to, to have the connection uh, to Egypt through TV. It's not only because we find a lot of private channels that are broadcasting, but we need this little bit of real news about Egypt that gives you peace of mind when you're abroad and you see what is happening really, and minute by minute through Nile TV. So it's very important for Egyptians abroad to keep uh, in touch through Nile TV. And how was it perceived by the foreigners? They love it. They love it and they, uh, they, they want to be part of it. Even they want to come to Egypt when they see it. 
because it gives them the desire to come to Egypt. They, they respect even Egypt more and more, and they respect all our traditions, and they respect the fact that women has a place in, in society and in broadcasting at that standard. They are amazed, they love it, and they respect it. Well, uh, whenever we talk about Mal TV, also we are talking about um, something really very important, um, the energy of its employees and, uh, of course, uh, the reporters who are keen to move all around whenever there is uh, an event taking place uh, in Egypt or even outside Egypt. Uh, in addition to always, uh, we are keen uh, to adopt uh, innovations and to upgrade our programs and ideas and goals. How far do you see that? Well, uh, you see, when you know uh, through the years, of course, there's been a lot of uh, change in Nile TV uh, taking part uh, alongside with what's happening in the world. But, of course, uh, just recently as well, uh, you have a very active president, uh, Dr. Savary Hassan. She is a marvelous person because she has the knowledge of management economically and uh, in every way. She manages in a, in, a, in a great way to the extent that she, she, when I see the photos of everyone, everyone calls her by her name. It's very important to keep this energy between employees and to work as one loving team together. It, 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 it takes the, the whole channel into another standard because everyone works as one team which is very important. And this is managed by the spirit of everyone and, of course, loving the, the manager who's leading, your leader. You all love each other and, and your leader. And that's a great success to the channel. So, uh, yeah. Well, we we'll always say whenever you see something successful or uh, a place that is really successful, of course, we have to first of all uh, look at the leader who is able to bring all these people with this uh, uh, actually a beautiful spirit, uh, energy, uh, who are keen to work and uh, everyone is keen to present uh, the best of what he of course, uh, our uh, leader, uh, head of channel, Tarit Hussain, played a crucial role in this respect, bringing all of us together, uh, cooperating together and working together. And we have to admit, yes, we are here in this channel acting as uh, we are at home. We are all acting as, just as we always say, as one man. So, um, talking also about the role of Nile TV International when it comes to all the political events taking uh, place in the region. Uh, I will start by looking at Gaza, for example, and uh, what is happening and how we were keen to uh, follow the, the news and update uh, minute by minute uh, without being biased uh, to anyone, just to show exactly what is happening on the ground. That's a very important uh, image and character of Nile TV city, of the news that they're broadcasting and all over the world, alert to what's happening all over the world, uh, in Gaza, in Africa, everywhere. You, you just tell the real, authentic news that are happening without uh, uh, any lies or any hiding anything. You just tell the truth, which is very important because everybody project his life according to what he hears. You, you plan your life according to these news. So if you have fake news, you, your life is not well uh, organized So in everyone's life. So it's very important to be relying on, on a reliable, authentic channel that diffuses the reality. It's very important. Well, uh, of course, uh, Dr. Vivian has been with us, and uh, we need to take also a look at uh, some political issues, especially uh, when it comes to the African continent, because uh, just now also we have got uh, some uh, many uh, short documentaries uh, talking about the African vision and talking about the African continent and uh, how uh, this rich continent can achieve a lot. Uh, actually, President El-Sisi uh, recognized this importance of the African continent from the first minute and was keen to develop uh, the continent in general and to work hard for adopting a vision for Africa and uh, working more and more among the African countries. So um, if we're talking about the uh, 
policy among African countries so far and uh, the linkage between them and how uh, every country now is working very hard. Each one is trying to take benefit of the expertise of the other to achieve something and to reach the vision of the African continent. How do you see this? Well, it was very important to help President Sisi as well. As soon as he came, he was so keen on uh, regaining his, uh, the place of Egypt in Africa. And we've seen in his approach in everything, even in Egypt, he's completely innovative and uh, creative and everything. He, he had the presidency of the African Union, which helped him a lot to achieve what he wanted and to put Egypt back on its place in, in a much faster way than we could ever dream, because he is a very... A uh, gallant man, caring man. We see that he's a very polite president. He doesn't go and threaten anyone or anything like some other president that we see. He respects every country, every president. He's very humble. He's very likable. So it's it's very important to have uh, intimacy between the presidents of of the 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 continent that's waking up and the continent of the future. And by having the presidency of the African Union, it helped him a lot. He invited all the presidents here. They had a brotherly talk on how to have a vision of the, of the Africa that we all want to be, the Africa that is all united, that Africa that uses all its resources fairly to, to create trade, trade uh, uh, visions between the African uh, countries within Africa. So it's, it's very important, and our president is achieving that by all means, uh, sending, uh, even going himself, we see now today, he's, he's, uh, he's in Eritrea. A few days ago, he was in Sudan and, and in Tanzania, and everywhere he goes, everywhere where all the brothers call him to concert and to have help and to have vision how to manage certain problems, how to help the stability of the continent, because the continent needs a lot of stability to achieve what we want. As he always says, stability is an important part of any improvement in any place. So this only can be done through dialogue, through consultations, through visits, through brotherly talks in order to take Africa to the standards they want and we all want and that the world needs at the moment because the world needs stability, the world needs peace, the world needs success to the future generations that are coming. Well, President El Sisi is always keen, despite of all the challenges he faced uh, when it comes to bringing uh, the continent together and uh, work for the vision uh, of Africa uh, for 2030. Actually, uh, he continued on the, this path, and uh, many of the countries realized how important it is to cooperate together. So how do you see the challenges so far? There are some challenges we were able to confront, and still we have more and more, especially we can see all what is happening around right now. Of course, uh, as soon as uh, some powers feel that unity is coming on and success will follow, because of interest and all that, they want to stall all that. But these are challenges that are very well uh, confronted by President Sisi because he's a calm person. He looks at things in a very quiet way. He doesn't get... Uh, uh, he, he's a wise man. He is a wise man, so he knows how to go through this challenge with the help of everybody else in the continent through the meetings that he has with his uh, presidents of the other countries, uh, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, through the ambassadors, through many tools that he's using to uh, overcome these challenges. And uh, we're overcoming them. There are big challenges, but unity is coming stronger and stronger, and Africa will be thriving again. Well, it was also very important because uh, now we can understand that we can never exclude the economic issues from political issues. Uh, they both have to move uh, in parallel lines. So it was also very important to um, establish permanent commercial centers and warehouses for goods uh, among all of the African countries. So how do you see the impact of this in increasing the, the African continent? And we always say that Egypt is the gate to Africa. Of course, if you remember a few years ago, maybe you were not born, there was a company called El Nasr Import-Export. 
and it has an office in every country of Africa. And that, com that company used to boost a lot of trade between Africa. Now it has changed, but it's coming back in different names, in different uh, activities, in different energies, but it's coming back. And actually, it would be a good idea, this is a, a, a suggestion from myself, that uh, youth uh, chambers of commerce for all African entrepreneurs used to get together because the, the new generation has a lot of new ideas in how to uh, accelerate trade and improve trade between countries and with the economic side of it when, what, when trade. So I would suggest that to create a chamber of African youth entrepreneurs to get in touch uh, and be part of some of the meetings of the foreign affairs or the trade uh, uh, ministries and cooperation ministries, that would be a great help to improve that. Because we've seen with the stoppage, uh, with the re reduction of uh, boats coming to Suez Canal, all the countries along the Red Sea used to take advantage of that, including Eritrea, including Djibouti, including all these countries. So the economic part of these countries is being affected uh, very much in that. So there must be some solutions in, in the peaceful uh, aim to have a peace around the world in order to regain the passage of the, of the boats and, uh, and aid along these sides as well. So this is not working, so we have to activate the inside trade, the, the uh, mari uh, not maritime trains and roads and all that between Africa. So there are a lot of dreams but they are feasible, they are achievable, and we are working on it with our dear president and our ministries and our ministers who are very active ministers and ambassadors all over the world. So, first of all, when it comes to uh, youth, we can see how President El Sisi is taking very much care of the youth, including them in all of the activities, giving them the way to be uh, decision makers and prepare them for the future. And uh, on, on this level, actually, the President was keen to bring all African youth together. And I think this is also very, very important for the future of the continent. Of course, when we've seen the, all the uh, conferences of youth of the world, and that included as well partly the youth of Africa. And when he suggested that Luxor would be the city of the youth of African youth, what it was uh, with a very good aim in it to activate this relation between the Africans. So uh, in general, but if we can now start uh, concentrating on the trade side, on the uh, tourism side, on the uh, scientific education side. We create these committees to, to bring everything back on the track, like he started, because of economic uh, problems, we could not continue having these conferences because of the cost. But now I think we have enough uh, uh, knowledge in order to create these committees, in order to have the youth working again together, even online, even online. So there are many ways to do it, and I think uh, our president started with a great, great uh, idea and initiative by the Youth Forum, which was wonderful, and uh, we should continue uh, with the restriction of the economic uh, spending now in, in so many other ways. Uh, doctor, from your own point of view, what other uh, or further steps uh, that can enhance the exchange of culture and uh, scientific visits uh, when it comes to youth among uh, the African continent? I think some uh, exchange programs and even gastronomic exchange programs, tourism uh, or anything, you know, when you have uh, an Egyptian week in, in Tanzania, a Tanzanian week in Egypt, it talks about uh, uh, gastronomy, talks about the industry that they have, it, it brings people from there to here, it brings people from here to there. We should create as well like, like a, a center of exchange without money because some of the people don't have money and here and there so they can exchange goods without money. So like, a, 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 don't they call it truck in French? So uh, this type of business should start, we should start doing that from now and to see how we can do it through the meetings, through the, the suggestion of, 
of the use of the uh, uh, foreign affairs of the cooperation, how to start something like that in order to help people uh, exchange things between countries. Right, uh, Dr. Vivian Moore, our political analyst, thank you very much for joining us. And I guess with this, we come to the end of our breakfast show for today. We conclude, of course, we say happy birthday now, TV International, and uh, throughout the day, we're going to continue to hear more about our celebrations uh, for the 31st anniversary of Nile TV International. Thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for more coming up on Nile TV International.